Acting DHS Secretary Chad Wolf. Chad, thank you. And FBI Director Christopher Wray. Thank you, Chris, very much. We're also pleased to be joined by Americans who have tragically lost their loved ones to recent violence. To each of you, please know that America grieves with you, that we pledge to honor the memory of your cherished loved ones by fighting to bring safety in every single community. We will bring that safety, you will see. For decades, politicians running many of our nation's major cities have put the interests of criminals above the rights of law-abiding citizens. These same politicians have now embraced the far-left movement to break up our police departments, causing violent crime in their cities to spiral — and I mean spiral seriously — out of control. In New York City, over 300 people were shot in the last month alone, a 277 at least percent increase over the same period of a year ago. Murders this year have spiked 27 percent in Philadelphia, 94 percent in Minneapolis, compared to the same period in 2019. Perhaps no citizens have suffered more from the menace of violent crime than the wonderful people of Chicago, a city I know very well. At least 414 people have been murdered in the city this year, a roughly 50 percent increase over last year. More than 1,900 people have been shot. These are numbers that aren't even to be believed. Yesterday alone, 23 people were shot in Chicago, including at least 15 who were shot in a merciless onslaught of gunfire outside of a funeral home. 63 people were shot in the city this past weekend, and at least 12 people were killed. Over the Fourth of July weekend, nearly 80 people were shot and 17 were killed. Over Father's Day weekend, 104 people were shot and 15 were killed, including five young children. And the last weekend in May saw the city's deadliest day on record, 18 murders in 24 hours. Behind each of these horrifying statistics is a victim, a family, a loved one, and a life of cruelly shattered, and it's just so sad to see and so sad to look and so sad to see how these lives have been just torn apart. An African-American father of three was killed while walking into a store to pay his cell phone bill. A 13-year-old girl was killed when a stray bullet came through the window of her home and hit her in the neck in the presence of her family. On Independence Day, 14-year-old Vernado Jones, Jr. was playing basketball with friends in a Chicago park when he was senselessly killed in a massacre that left eight people dead or wounded. Vernado's mother, Cheryl, is here with us today. And, Cheryl, please know that all Americans mourn by your side. We will carry your son's memory. He will not be forgotten, Cheryl. Cheryl. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here, Cheryl. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to meet you before. Thank you. This rampage of violence shocks the conscience of our nation, and we will not stand by and watch it happen. Can't do that. The citizens of Chicago are citizens of America, and they have the same right as every other American to live in safety, dignity, and peace. No mother should ever have to cradle her dead child in her arms simply because politicians refuse to do what is necessary to secure their neighborhood and to secure their city. Every American, no matter their income, their race, or their zip code, should be able to walk their city streets free from violence and free from fear. For this reason, today, I am announcing that the Department of Justice will immediately surge federal law enforcement to the City of Chicago. The FBI, ATF, DEA, U.S. Marshal Service, and Homeland Security will together be sending hundreds of skilled law enforcement officers to Chicago to help drive down violent crime. And murderers and violent criminals are breaking a wide range of federal laws. We have that. It's as wide as it can be. We will find them, arrest them, and prosecute them. They will be in jail for many years to come. 
And we will work with local police to identify violations of state and local laws to help ensure that offenders are caught and jailed for their crimes. But we must remember that the job of policing a neighborhood falls on the shoulders